Well, I think it's really important to differentiate between colony mortality and colony losses. And so we've experienced about a 30% loss every winter for the last seven winters in the United States. So the increase in mortality is, is really a puzzle. And we know that it involves Varroa mite. So we, we're thinking it's, it's a lot like what causes heart disease and what causes this increase in heart disease. Well, we know that it's Varroa mite, which is this parasitic mite. We know it's poor nutrition, and there's increasing evidence that more and more land in the Midwest, where a lot of the colonies go for in their summer pastures, is being plowed under by corn and soybean. We also know that there's probably increased exposures to pesticides, although not one pesticide is standing out, to be honest. Um, so we think it's, it's a multifactorial process. Of course, the droughts don't help situations because the droughts concentrate the issue. You have less forage for the bees, you may have increased pesticide exposure, and it also becomes increasingly challenging for the beekeepers to treat for varroa mite in a timely way. I think we need to make sure that there's bee forage in the environment and so we need to dedicate a certain percentage of agricultural land to the production of bee forage. I think that's an important step. We also have to reconsider our pesticide use practices and our labeling. For instance, fungicide is never considered a problem for bees and indeed bees can swim in fungicide and come out fine but we're seeing increasing evidence that it may have this, this sublethal effect that affects a generation later the bees produced. And so we have to reconsider how we label and value the risk of pesticides. Also, we look at the United States and we see that all the corn and all the soybeans are treated with these neonicotinoid pesticides. They're very good pesticides in the fact that they require a lot less of the active ingredient in the environment. But do we really need to have every single corn stalk in America treated with this product? And so I think we need to reconsider some of our, our policy there. I also think we have to make sure that beekeeping is an economically viable product. And so we're really having a problem. It's pretty clear that when beekeepers are making money, there are enough colonies to support the pollination demands in the country. And so we need to make sure that there's fair and equal trade across tr trading barriers. And we need to make sure that they can make a living doing what they do. We are in a very unique position because we could talk to people who've been in this beekeeping industry working with wild bees for generations and it's been handed from one family to the other and uh, interestingly what we find is that the beekeepers are talking about a decline in bees and what the causes are we really don't know, but as scientists, we have to investigate this. People are clearing forests for agricultural production, which means that bees are now being introduced to areas or introduced to new things like fertilizers. We've signed an agreement with the European Union for $12 million to do bee research in Africa. My institution is going to serve as a, a reference laboratory to look at pesticide residues, we're going to be looking at viruses, we're going to be looking at pests, and we're going to be involved in training of beekeepers, uh, the national programs in various parts of Africa. We're going to be doing it in partnership with the African Union Interbureau for Animal Research. They'll be involved in the outreach and we'll do the research aspect of it. So it's quite exciting that we're going to be doing this. And the kind of information we get, eventually we're going to share with various agencies, including the United Nations Environmental Programme. We've worked with them in the past in biodiversity issues. If you're talking about the European honeybees, about 10% loss is not much. However, we found that the, uh, with the infested um, bee colonies, we found a lot of viruses. With the intervention of human beings, we put the bees and we want to keep it in the same house for many years. So there is, it's likely that they have some diseases and pests. With the YB, we can see that we have fewer pathogens in them because they have gone, they change the hives every year. They migrate a lot, so it's very hard to actually quantify the number. But when you look at the neighbors and talking about with the locals, um, I can say that uh, wild bees is in are in decline, in great decline because of maybe climate change, deforestation, because we have to expand our agriculture um, area. 
um, because we have more population in Thailand.